so I've been putting the uh, US stock that was in this other massive binder, just so many stamps in here, oh my god. Um, I decided I could really use the shelf space of that binder, and I've already taken up all the sp shelf space for these massive US stock books that I've got. So, um, I'm gonna uh, switch it all over. It's taken a little while. So that it totally slowed me down, I accidentally um, forgot when I started doing the first couple pages. This is the design image number, not the Scott number. I haven't used these for so long that I forgot that's how I did it. So I started putting them all in here by Scott number. I went, oh, fuck, it's the design number. I had to, I had to redo them all for the first couple pages. It definitely sucked. But, um... It's been really nice. Uh, this is my this is the second stock book now I made it to, uh, which is like image designs, over a, a thousand. So, but basically I'm just taking out each chunk one by one and just slapping it in the corresponding spot. Um, I was actually going to dump all these into my U.S. grab bag box, but I decided since they are all organized, um, and I I do collect U.S. even though I've kind of given up on the whole world. Um, I will still collect some places for sure, like wartime Germany and whatnot, but um, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I, I, I can appreciate the amount of work that somebody had to make and put into this uh, album here with all this US stock. Um, I just don't want to let all of that work go to waste and I want to have a nice US collection too. Um, so I'm going to actually save all these. So I'm halfway there. This is taking forever to transfer all these stamps. <laughs> really, this is taking a really, really long time, but um, i am come, come up with a system where I, I take the pages out of the binder and then I pull the chunks of stamps one by one and I lay them left to right next to the binder. And uh, it's pretty dark, so. And then I put them in one by one. The only thing, um, you know, the bummer about what is taking, making this take forever is, um, of course, these are all organized by Scott number, and then my album is organized by the image number. So this is um, a little more tricky than I thought because, uh, like, he didn't do any definitives, I think. These are all commemorative stamps, so I can't just mindlessly put them in one number at a time. I have to reference the catalog and make sure that I'm, because uh, basically I'll, if I don't pay attention, he'll skip like 50 image numbers at once, and um, they were all definitives or something, right, and then uh, I'm, well, my numbers are off, so anyway, this is, this is, basically I'm like, ooh, 1725, and then I look at the catalog and I just make sure, 1725 is this stamp, this one goes in this row, boom. I have finally made it to the last page of this binder. Oh my god. Uh, this probably took, um, I'm going to say, like 10 hours <laughs> or more. Um, if you guys saw the binder before, oh my gosh, there's a lot of stamps in this binder. And, uh,. Wow, so I'm, uh, I'm almost done. Holy freaking for holies. <laughs> I did it. Oh, that was painful. That was painful, guys. That took a long time, but I'm so glad that I had patience to get this done because um, for one thing I freed up a binder's worth of space on my bookshelf and that real estate is quite needed. This is actually not a bad binder, I almost want to keep it, but yeah, we went from 1139 in the Scott catalog to 
4377. Yeah, that's that. Scott number is a uh, Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> so, my goodness. I, uh, so, I threw a lot of this into the uh, US. Um, well, I threw some of this into the US grab box that I have. But um, I kept most of it. And. Uh, I had an epiphany, you know, I said to myself, what am I gonna do with that? I didn't wanna just dump them all into the grab box because somebody spent a ridiculous amount of time uh, organizing all those stamps. Honestly, uh, whoever it was, like, I can't even imagine how much time they spent making that binder that I just transferred into mine. Um, just the time to transfer it over was pretty substantial here. Uh, and I can, only I can only imagine how much effort that guy put into that book, um, into that stock binder there. But uh, anyways, uh, part of why I, what spurred me into it, uh, besides the shelf space, was I know for a fact, I don't, I'm not even going to test them, these are acidic, these manila stock folders, um, no stock folders, like, you know, uh, you know you call them stock pages. Uh, Manila, yeah, no, no bueno. Thanks, Ted, over uh, Ted Tishka, I think is how you say it, over at Ted Talk Stamps. He had a video and gave a tip about um, an acid pen, and uh, that's what I learned. All Manila is pretty much acidic, so good luck. Almost all of it. Um, <laughs> I think it's extremely rare. Uh, I have a whole bunch of it, and I tested a lot of it, and most of it is acidic, so I just kind of don't do Manila folders or any, anything Manila. Wow. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, right, I have like three of these guys. This is uh, where I uh, three, four of these, and then some stock books. These are taking up shelf real estate, and these are meant to house these US stamps. Uh, that was my plan with, with these binders, so. Uh, it's just that one was like taking up space that it was all meant to be in here. So, anyways, it's uh, amazing that I am willing to spend the time to do some of this stuff. Honestly, that was a lot of stamps. That took many, many hours. So that week. Cool. So now I get to save this. And uh, even though they're acidic, uh, doesn't matter. I have a folder stacked with. Just a whole bunch of uh, random stock, anything stock related. Huh. Okay. Anyways, I got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Look. So. Let me add this to uh, add this in here. See if I can do it with one hand. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> cool, I'll put them in the next folder. Which interestingly had a uh, let me see here. Bag of messed up stamps. So he had this uh bag of stamps here. Um, Czechoslovakia, right? I I think they're garbage. Uh, all of them have some kind of major curl to them. I don't know how this ever happened to these. Like, they're really similar curls. Anyways, I was just curious. What would you guys do with a bag of stamps like this? I personally after I've kept this in the cabinet for a while and I forgot about it. Um, after looking at it now, I would throw this in the garbage. So I'm sure there's a lot of you that would say, hey, well, why wouldn't you just give it to somebody? I mean, they have postmarks on them, but and they're clearly CTOs. It's got to be mink, like perfect gum, right? But postmarked. That's my ISO symbol. 
Yeah, they're all sweet potatoes. This is uh, just a bag of bag of garbage, as far as I'm concerned. So, just a side note, uh, I want to take a quick uh, couple minutes just to talk about this Dymo Label Writer 450 label printer that I have, and I was using it to print out those little one by one inch labels and cut them out and uh, use that to identify stamps in my album. Pain in the butt. Um, and uh, anyways, I was just trying to find something better. Now, I will mention one of my subscribers um, recommended a cry cut printer. That's actually not a bad idea. Cry cut, C-R-I cut printer. Um, but uh, I already own this label writer and I was trying to find a way to make this work. So just for fun, I bought a, a roll of receipt paper. Now this is thermal receipt paper. It's two and a quarter inch um, with paper, which is actually the uh, the smallest I could find. I couldn't find anything that was like one by one inch or whatever, you know, one and a half or anything. So, even though I'd like it to be about half this wide, uh, this receipt paper at least is one of the only non-adhesive options for my printer, my label printer. So, uh, anyways, ended up with receipt paper, guys, and I went through a bunch of different stuff to try and figure out um, how to make it work for what I wanted. Anyways, um, let me see here. Let me take you to... Uh, printer software so um, basically you just got to tell it you got to once you get in the software you got to punch in what kind of stuff it is this is a 30270 two and a quarter inch white continuous paper it's 300 foot roll I paid like six or eight bucks or something I think eight bucks for shipping but six dollars for this roll on eBay anyway I made a mock-up of just some baloney uh, written in there uh, the, uh, just so that I could print it out and see. And uh, you can change the text, the size, the font, um, you know, make it italic, bold, whatever you want. Do anything you want in the software. It's pretty good. Almost anything you want. Um, I can make border around this thing if I wanted. Um, I actually played with all that, like you can see here. I just uh, I ended up, I don't want that. So uh, I ended up at eight point font. Um, and just uh, having it uh, the text centered, you know, auto center. So you put in whatever, you know, the info about your stamp, Scott number, year, the value, the information, description, uh, printer out, and poof, out pops my receipt like I was at the supermarket. And all I gotta do is just cut that out, not a big deal, snip, 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 and um, I've got a nice, easy way to identify stamps in your album but uh, I will say one of the main things about this why I wasn't satisfied even though the, the, the labels that I was using worked I still have them um, uh, is just the adhesive sucked because I had to cut them all out so the adhesive would get on these scissors and it would make the little strips that I'm cutting off of the label stick to the scissors and stick to everything and anyway the adhesive was the the major problem with what I how I was doing that. Uh, so yeah, I didn't need a label writer so much as just like a receipt printer, I guess ultimately. But um, and I'm sure that there's something better out there than this. But this is this is the best that I've come up with yet. No more adhesive label stickers. That was annoying. At least I can have it on you know nice non-stick um, receipt paper. So very happy with that. That was super cool. Um, and then you can just like save the file. And so every time I open this program up that's right there and I'll just hop on in there and you know put in a new description or change the Scott number or whatever's going on so um, pretty easy to do uh, the only real issue with this is the fact you still have to cut off the margins but uh, nonetheless uh, I've gotten uh, something finally a little bit better one little piece at a time right guys also I just wanted to mention uh, this awesome software that I've used for a long time so this is my desktop background, okay, for my computer. This is actually a computer monitor, a big massive 55 inch, so most people don't have it that big, but uh, expensive gaming monitor. Anyway, this is called um, Deskscapes. Deskscapes gives you animated background uh, for your, your desktop computer. Pretty awesome. Uh, there is all kinds of stuff. Now, I've had this for 
I'm gonna say five to eight years, uh, and they just released a new version, Des Descapes 11, I think. Uh, so, anyways, uh, basically, like you come in um, to Descapes and you've got different uh, backgrounds. So, like, let's go over here to uh, let's say most popular. Okay, and I'll just show you all the different backgrounds now. Most of these are animated backgrounds. Some of them are just wallpapers. But there's something in here for just about everybody. They have anything from beautiful landscapes, animals. They got uh, just dreamy, uh, dreamy ones. Uh, you know, winter, you know, summer. Whatever, look at this guy, he's a creeper. Uh, and so let's say for this one, um, if, there, if it is an animated background, they usually have an HD preview, so you can click on the link It'll take you to YouTube, and you can uh, watch a HD preview of, of it before you download it. This one's pretty killer. This will be good for Halloween. Um, so anyways, um, I've always loved this. I spend a lot of time on my computer. I think that this software is awesome, and I don't know anybody else that uses it. But, um, I, you know, back in the day, uh, five, eight years ago, it was like a one-time deal. You paid ten, eight bucks. It was really cheap. And you had it, and then um, so I've had to pay again. I think as they, as they updated it and upgraded it over the years, but I think it's probably ten or fifteen bucks is my guess right now. Anyways, I thought it was totally worth mentioning. You can you go into these um, clips, you find one that you like, and you can click like, and it'll add it to your favorites. And so you'll you'll always have the ones that you want to use. Otherwise, you can make your own playlist. Uh, like I made this one, Kyle's Backgrounds, and it's one, uh, pretty much a lot of my favorite ones. Um, and so I can just apply the playlist to my desktop, apply to all monitors, boom, now it's going to play all of these. And the reason being, I have the settings, it lets you make it where you can sequentially change through them, and you can change at different time intervals, like every 30 seconds, a minute, whatever. So. Uh, I like to do it 30 seconds. I like it to be pretty quick. Most of these clips are shorter than 30 seconds anyways. Uh, so, uh, but they're, they're beautiful. And so let's say like, uh, just, I'm, I'm going to show you guys some of them just so that you can see, because I think they're awesome and I've always loved it. And I just thought it was worth mentioning. If you spend a lot of time on the computer, you're willing to pop, you know, 10 or 15 bucks, whatever it is. Um, and then sp spend a little time looking through the, the software and find something that you like. Man, it's just awesome. Um, so this one's an aquarium. I always thought these ones were neat. There's a bunch of different ones just like this. So if this coral didn't float your boat, you'd find some different style. This is a country creek. I just like this one too. Had this one for many, many years. Just a calming, beautiful background here. So this one's like ink and water. This is where, these are so pretty, look at that. And they're 4K? Man. Backgrounds have come so far. This one's pretty gorgeous, I gotta say. Cool. Good old King Kong. They have um, different movie clips. So you can... <laughs> I mean, this is... This is my desktop, guys. Like... <laughs> you know, it's just a weird thing. Like, hey, I'm gonna pull up Google. Boop. <laughs> you know, this is totally um, just a background. It it's just amazes me. I thought, and I think it's great. <laughs> Here's another one. So yeah, you can make like a playlist for nighttime, playlist for daytime, playlist for winter, for summer. I mean, just anything you can think of. And parties, New Year's, Christmas. Yeah. They've got some pretty cool ones, you know, for HD, that's just, they're awesome, so. I hope some of you found this useful, and maybe you would enjoy having something like this on your computer. Personally, I think that it is freaking awesome, and I love this stuff.